Hey guys, Mike here. So, 28 minute garage floor pour. This is a 26 by 26 garage. I was hired here today just to pour it and finish it so the builder can stop building. Now, I didn't have anything to do with the specs on the garage. The builder and the foundation contractors are the ones that hash out the specs. So, on this one, it was just a 3500 PSI concrete with fiber mesh. There was no vapor barrier for this one, no wire mesh. Uh, just the concrete with the fiber mesh. So we're here just to pour and finish today, and that's what I'm doing. I just wanted to show you with some type of plan, you know, a little bit of a plan of attack, that you can pour a garage floor like this pretty quickly if you, if you know what you're doing. So that's what this video is about. And I'm going to let it play out in real time. Not really going to speed it up at all, so you can just see how we attack a garage like this, just in case you're thinking of pouring your own garage floor. Now the chutes on the trucks, you can see they don't quite reach the back, so we have a little small extension chute, that's about an 8 foot chute we hook on, so we don't have to pull the concrete quite so far. We use the little chute a lot. Um, and then for a slump, you know, we're pouring a fairly loose slump. I have a video about why I can pour such a loose slump, I'll have that come up at the end of this video. But we use a high range water reducer in the mix. And that allows us to pour a fairly loose slump so the concrete's nice and workable. And that's what we're doing right now. The, the driver's giving it just a few more gallons of water. Because when it first came out, we decided, yeah, it's, it's close, but we want just a little bit more in it. So he's spinning it up, giving it a little more water. Probably five more gallons. He's got nine and a half yards on here for this floor. So it was four to four and a half inches thick. And then it was pretty thick in front of the doors. Now you're gonna if you're gonna see later on in the video. We had a little issue pop up here towards the end of the pour, and you're gonna see how we handle that issue and how we what we had to do to rectify it. But uh, we don't normally have any issues at all when we pour floors like this. But this one we had a little bit of an issue. You can see how easy that chute makes it. It just puts it right where you need it. Now Darren's over there, he's magging the edges. We got a blue chalk line that we snap for our grade. And then you can see my laser right there set up. We're gonna use the laser to shoot our pad, our wet pad in the middle. The garage slopes two inches from the back towards the front on this one too. Most of the garages we do like this inside a frost wall, they all have a little bit of slope to them. Not many people use a center drain anymore. The, uh, most of the new ones we do all slope to the front. So the slump on that concrete, you know, if we if we had a guy here testing it with a with a cone and a slump test, it would probably slump out to around a seven, I would say. And with that high range water reducer in it, you know, we can pour up to an eight slump pretty easily. Slump is what how wet or dry the concrete is for those of you that don't know and the numbers like 1 through 10 are the just gauge how wet or dry it is a 1 or 2 or 3 or even a 4 slump would be really really dry and then as you get up to 5, 6, 7 and 8 it's, it's, it's just how it loosens up I'll have to do a video on a slump cone test to show you guys here coming up pretty soon so now that we've got enough concrete up on the back, we can take that little chute off and just use the truck chutes. Those truck chutes come off the back of the truck about, you know, 16, 17 feet or so. And when you pour a 26 foot deep garage, they just don't reach far enough for us anyway. So now I'll just freehand the truck chute while we dump. And then we'll get most of this poured out. We typically like to pour out like 90% of the concrete in the garage before we start screeding it. Now you don't have to do that. You just got to pour out enough so you can screed, which on something like this would probably be, you know, probably be about half of it anyway. You want to get that pad in the middle where the, where the garage slopes. So the pad in the middle, the wet pad, you'll see me make that in a minute here, is going to be an inch lower than the where Darren's mag in there in the back. And then the front, 
The front of the garage where well, you can see my 2x12 form there just down in the right hand corner, that's 2 inches lower than the back. So this is how we basically pour out a garage like this. Is I'll run the chute. A lot of a lot of trucks that you guys use, they might have the, the front end loaders where the driver can run the chute. That's that's just an added bonus. So you actually kind of save some manpower that way. We don't have many of those here where we are. There's very few companies that have those. So most of them are what we call rear end dumps, like this one. Still got really good drivers but just don't have many front dumps here. So the pace, you know, the, the thumbnail said 28 minute garage pour and that might have that might have indicated that we were hurrying or rushing to get this done fast. You can see we're not. We're just, this is how we normally pour. We didn't talk about doing it in the time period. I just, when I got the video done, I saw that we did it in about 28 minutes, so I thought I'd show you guys just what you can do if you have, uh, you know, three or four people that kind of know what they're doing, how fast you can get this poured. Everybody's got a job, you know, Darren's magging, I'm running the shoot, Luke's breaking down, he is over there breaking down over there on that side, and uh, that gets the concrete out in somewhat level, you know, getting it level here initially getting it really close to grade is important you don't want to be too low you don't want to be too high especially if you pour out as much as we do and that's just comes with having a good eye Luke's got a really good eye when he's breaking down so you can get the concrete you know between that four to four and a half inches that we needed that's a good workable slump you can tell right there that when that's coming out of the chute pretty easy to pull around, it's easy to mag, it's going to be pretty easy to screed. We're going to screed this one by hand today because of the slope. We don't typically use a power screed with a slope, although you can if you want them. It's just, we, we don't normally do that. We got about three quarters of the garage poured out. We'll get most of the rest of that. We'll leave a little bit of what we call a hole, just in case we're high. We can pull the high into that hole and not have to shovel it out. just back and forth slow and easy I try to make it when I'm running that chute with the concrete coming out I try to make it as easy as possible for the person raping the concrete behind it I try to get it as close to grade as I can I don't want to I don't want to leave them a big pile of concrete to pull down I can get it pretty close just by running the chute like that how just going back and forth slowly fills that up so if you do you can see how that concrete's just sitting there after we rake it down you, I mean you, you do have some working time with this it was actually a little chilly this morning it was probably 50 degrees so that you know there's no more warm water in the concrete this is this is getting towards the end of May 1st of June so they, they shut the warm water off here so it's got cold water in it. We do have, we actually do put a little bit of accelerator in it still when it's this cold. So, concrete's, uh, you know, and it's going to be real cloudy today with no sun. So we, we did end up putting a little bit of accelerator in this stuff. So we're almost to the point where we're going to shut off the concrete. We'll shoot our wet pad and then we'll start screening. We're going to have a little bit of an issue here in a second. You can see how we almost fill that whole thing in. You know, like I said, he's got nine and a half yards on there. Garage figured, you know, about nine. I always get some extra. You never want to run out. We ran out on a job the other day, and it's no fun. You got to wait for another truck to come back and you never know how long that's going to take 
Oh, there's a concrete ball. Any of you guys, let me know down in the comments if you get those little balls in your concrete mix sometimes. <laughs> you see Luke just break it up. So there, so we left left little hole back there. But we filled in almost all this floor. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to set my uh, receiver on my grade stick. Right to the pad that Darren magged on the edge there, right in the middle. And then I can go into the middle of the garage and make my wet pad based off of that level right there. The drops on those garage doors, you know, 2x12s, those are pretty deep. The foundation contractors that make that do these foundations, they just they like these deep drops. Um, we typically like putting a two by six or a two by eight there for the drop, but they 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 want them twelve inches deep for some reason. I don't know. All right, so I got my level set. So I'm going to go in and just shoot my pad here in the middle. Now we could, there's, there's a bunch of ways you can do this. We could have set a metal pin here and like put a nail through it. Our metal pins have holes in them so you can put nails through them or screws through them. I could have previously already done that. And sometimes we do. And that's perfectly fine. You can see how easy that is to make that pad though. Um, and sometimes we just do it this way. Some guys will set up an actual screed board and screed off the board in the middle and then they'll take it out. We, we've never done that. This is the way I was taught right here. So we're using about a 13 foot screed, magnesium screed board. All our screeds are magnesium like this. We don't have any any uh, wooden 2x4 screeds. So we use these. I've had these for years. They last forever. And they stay nice and straight too. There's no... There's no checking them to make sure they're straight. They always stay straight. So this is the basic process for our screed. We call this kick screeding. So as we screed the concrete, we'll kick our boot slightly when we pick it up and move it back and it fills in our footprints. And then we don't have to stop. And all we're looking to do is making sure that outside edge, that very edge of the concrete scores onto the pad. We don't want to dig into it. We don't want to ride high on it. We just want to leave a tiny little bit of a line as we're kick screeding. And pouring the slump like this makes the screeding part a heck of a lot easier. So there's one bay. We call those bays. Like a bay is about the same width as the straight edge, the screed. So there's one bay. This is the second bay we're pulling down. So a garage like this has about four bays to it that we screed. Now you, if you don't pour like us for every day, you could just pour out half this and do two bays, get them screeded, get them both loaded, and then do the second half. You can see how much time it takes to screed. It doesn't take very much time at all to screed a garage like this. bay two on to bay three we always strike the garage doors we want to make sure the garage doors are perfectly flat in front just in case the board has a little bit of a dip or a hump in it the screed will tell you and you'll make sure that your your uh, floor is always flat where your doors sit I can tell we're a little bit low already, so I'm getting a little bit more dumped in there and getting it pushed up. So these guys can screed that whole third bay without having to stop, hopefully. So you, like I said before, the garage floor slopes a little bit towards the front. And even when you pour a, a slump like this, a lo pretty loose slump, the concrete doesn't sag when it only slopes two inches. It could slope three or four inches to the front and it still wouldn't sag. Um, it's just, there's too much of an area really for it to sag. Now you get into a lot of slope and a slump like this would sag 
so you want to pour it a little drier, but there's no problem at all on a garage slope like this. Yeah, I gotta keep that concrete right at the perfect height out there on his outside edge or else he's gotta stop and fix it like that. So I wasn't really I wasn't really doing my job as good as I could have, I guess. I wasn't paying attention. Nothing worse than having to stop when you're screaming like that. So there's the third bay. And now we'll turn it and we'll come down that fourth bay. And I'm going to show you what popped up here on us unexpectedly. Yeah, I'm telling the driver we need just a little more. We're still a little bit low. These guys, they need plenty of concrete by their feet. Otherwise, when they kick, they have to kick a lot more. And that's, that's not fun to do either. You want to just be able to move backwards without having to kick too hard. We were pretty low, I guess. I had to run that two or three times to get, you know, some extra concrete in there. So it was a lot, a little bit thicker than what we thought. You see, when those guys screed, they like to leave it just a little high behind the screed. You see, see what they're pulling back there every time they pull that screed and pull back just a little bit of high and that's the important part they don't want it low they don't want it too high but just pulling back a little bit is what makes the floor nice and flat and level we've got to get a little bit more in there before we can finish screeding off that last piece and as we're doing this as we're doing this we're checking to make sure that uh, we, you know, obviously we don't want to get too much in there, but we want to fill it up to the top of the forms right in front. So we'll get that part in there. We know we don't want to put too too much in there. We don't want to leave a big pile on the ground. So we're trying right now. I'm eyeing those forms right now. See that? To see how straight they are. Typically, we don't have any trouble with them when we put a you know one brace or a kicker on it like that. But I guess the sand out in front where we put that metal pin in was just a little soft, so that form really kicked out. There's a big bow in it, so we got to rectify that. That kind of slowed us down here a few minutes. You'll see we got to kick that back in so it's nice and straight. There's nothing worse than having a board that bows out where the garage doors are. Most of the ones we do, almost all of them that we do with one kicker like that, plus we screw the board into the foundation, uh, we don't get any movement out of it. But today, for some reason, we got some movement out of it. So we're going to have to, we'll have to get some more braces, get what we call a pinch bar, and then force that board back in. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So Tia's over there on the bow float. She's going to get that all bow floated nice and smooth. And that's the basic, you know, that's how we leave it until we power trowel it, just like that, both loaded. That makes the power troweling part a lot easier, getting it nice and smooth. And when, when you pour a slump like this, it's usually just once down and back, and it's both loaded really nice. That's another nice thing right there. So we're going to come out a little bit further out into the out into the gravel there away from the foundation hopefully we'll find something a little bit more solid out there we can put a pin into that'll hold there is quite a bit of pressure there but those forms you know those 2 by 12 forms they're pretty rugged so Luke's gonna use that pinch bar with some leverage and he's gonna push that back now when I'm pounding that stake into I can tell it's that's pretty rugged right there that's not gonna move once I get it to where I want it. And I can 
force that right back to where we need it right there. So that one's holding pretty good. We needed just a little bit more, so we're going to put that second one in. When they dug that foundation out, when they backfilled it, they just backfilled it with pretty much sand. And that's kind of what we put that first stake into. It didn't feel that soft at first, but it must have been. It didn't really hold anything. That's the key to getting them boards back is using a pinch bar like that. That makes, you know, that makes using your leverage a lot easier. So Darren's eyeing that one now. And we got that one straight with those two kickers. We'll have to, now we'll have to dig a little bit of concrete. Well, no, I guess, I'm sorry, we needed a third one right here to the left, so... We're going to put a third one in on that one. And then the other one there, the other form, the door to my right, needed one also. You can see this slowed us down a few minutes. Otherwise, we probably would have had this poured in about 23, 24 minutes. Actually, that's not holding anything. You see how I pounded that in? Just pounded it into dry sand. I gotta get another kicker that's a little bit longer, get out into something solid. So, if you've learned anything from our mistakes, it's you know, make sure you got good solid kickers on your 2x12s when you put them up in front of your garage door boards. I guess uh, the next one we do will have a little bit a little bit more uh, bracing on it. It's not a huge deal as long as you catch it, but if you don't catch it. You know, then it could be a problem later on down the road, I guess. So I left it. I'm leaving this in real time so you can see just how long this takes. You know, and if you're prepared for it, which, you know, we had kickers and stakes in the, in the truck. It's, it's not a huge deal. And like I said, <clears throat> it's a little chilly this morning, but we do have accelerator on the concrete, so we, I mean, we do want to get this finished up. And you can see I got a little bit longer thicker, but those pins are still going in there pretty easy, so I'm going to put two in this one. Just need to get that board back in just about a half inch, so that'll be just enough right there to hold it straight. Well, it's pretty rare we got to put three kickers on one form like that, garage door form. Usually, like I said, one holds the middle perfectly fine. Now we're going to redo that one. That one's not as bad. Darren's going to, since we pushed that form back in, now we've got a little bit of excess concrete there. So we're just going to dig that out with his mag, get it mag flat. what she's doing is when when she picks up the bull float it leaves a like a little bit of a mark there so she goes back and she mags out that mark so it's nice and flat where she picks up the bull float and that way it just makes it easier to finish later on when the concrete starts to set up that edge is all nice and flat already see the boys got that door pretty much straightened out I went and found another another kicker that will get in and that'll get that door straightened out then we can finish screeding this thing and get it done now we're pouring a second one today too on site it's a detached garage it's it's in behind us on the other side of the concrete truck so that concrete truck is sitting here waiting too that's that's a 24-24 garage. It's just a little bit smaller than this one. But we're going to get both of them poured today. And that one will be on another video. But just uh, you know, to let you know that we got another truck sitting here waiting. Yeah, so we got that straight. Now we can get this finished off. So 
Darren's going to step out. He's not going to step down into that really thick part. Oh God, yes. And then we'll, we'll get this screeded, get it bolt loaded, and time's up. And you guys let me know down in the comments if you think this is, you know, pretty fast, if you think of it's average, or if you think it's slow. You know, I know some of you guys out there are going to say it's slow, but it's not like we were hurrying at all. Even though we got another one we're doing. I just wanted to show you that if you have the process, you know, if you have a little bit of a procedure, then a garage floor pull like this is actually pretty easy. So that's it, guys, for this one. You know, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.